Colin Thompson. Welcome back to the latest edition in our COVID coaching series. We hope you find these videos helpful to you and your family during this unusual time. Today, we have Coach Elise Lee, who has returned to us. Actually, she's returned to us, and she's also returned to her home in Beijing. If you recall, the last time we talked to Elise, she had planned on spending one week in her, in her hometown. However, due to being in her hometown at the exact moment when the regulations took place here in China, she ended up spending 13 weeks at home. So she returned to Beijing last week, and today she's going to share with us her, her experience being by herself, being single, in that mandatory 14-day quarantine. So Elise Lee, welcome back to the program. Thank you, Colin. Well, I can't imagine how long I have been talking with you last time. Uh, yeah, I mean, self-quarantine, and now it's about uh, more than one week. So I'm so excited and can now wait to go out after <laughs> five days more. <laughs> so. how, how did it feel? I'm quite sure you had a special feeling when you're playing touchdown in Beijing. How did it feel mm. actually walking through your front door again? Well, to tell you, let me tell you, it's complicated. It's familiar and it's strange to me. Just walking into my room and um, yeah, the first impression I got is I cannot believe that I have been left so long because this is out of plan. Yeah. And after I arrived to the house, the room, I started doing the big clean. I spent yeah. the first day to clean all the things, the dust and then change the furniture. And yeah, I, yeah, I do a lot of work that day. Mm. I don't know, just feel like, oh, I need to do that. Right. Yeah. Now, were you allowed, to, when you landed into the airport, did you go directly home or were you tested first? Well, actually, I came back by the railway station, uh, the yeah. railway. Yes, uh, because my hometown is so close to Beijing. And I know that I will be in the self-quarantine as soon as I arrived. So I didn't go back. I didn't come back directly. I went to see my boyfriend. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just met him and had a coffee and yeah, talked a few words and um, just come back. Okay, mm -hmm. so you came back by the train, and you mentioned before that you came back around during the first week of April because you wanted to avoid the mass yeah. movement of people um, on April 8th. And guys, as you may or may not know, uh, Wuhan, which was the epicenter of the outbreak, was literally shut down. You could not go in or out of Wuhan for almost 78 days. No in, yeah. no out. And on April 8th, they opened the city back up. And in one single day, up to 70,000 people traveled that first day, within the first 12 hours. So people were really looking forward to getting out. So at least you, you planned your travel a few days before that to avoid that rush of people. And from what I understand, yeah. you did not have, when you got back to Beijing, you did not have to go in any testing. You were supposed to go from a train to your home. But you stopped to see your boyfriend, which we understand first, to have some coffee and tea. Um, I'm glad you could, you could spend more time back with him after being gone for 13 weeks. Um, so yeah. the 14-day quarantine, T share with us some real aspects of it. I understand that you're not allowed to leave for any reason. Um, they deliver food to you, and you must self-report certain things every day. So tell us some really more de details about that 14-day quarantine. Yes, as uh, soon as I arrived in the community, um, I just registered in the gate and people give me a lot of um, report to fill. How, um, how did I get back by train or by airplane or uh, which number is it and uh, um, who, I, who I met or yeah, just to report every detail. <laughs> so uh, after I do that, they give me uh, uh, a few few papers and also a temperature uh, testing uh, tool and it also asked me to report my temperature every day and after I come back to my home I cannot go out anymore and if I order food the community staff will help me to deliver all the things I ordered but only one time one day no more like extra things just a staple food or vegetable or simply meat as for, for a living so um yeah i came back and I, I know wow this is a journey like 14 days for myself and i start to realize that and um i don't know i'm trying to you know get used to to this kind of single 
self quarantine life. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting because you mentioned that you had to register um, at your gate. So what that what, what that means is it, at the front of every apartment complex here, you have a table mm-hmm. now, which wasn't there before, <laughs> but at the table, <laughs> they, they take all your information. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. What, what's exciting now is, not, well, not exciting, but interesting, they track everything now by an app. So there's an app now that you, you, scan, a, you scan a QR code, and it has all your mm-hmm. information, where you traveled, mm-hmm. Um, who you've seen, mm. your temperature, mm. um, your okay. your government ID number. So it's very invasive, but they want to make sure that if they later find out that you were exposed, somebody you were you were with was exposed, they can track you down and do that tracing, right? So it's very important mm-hmm. yes. to do this. So it's very responsible for individuals. It may seem like intrusive because they're literally tracking ALL of your movement, okay? Everywhere you go, they're yes. tracking. Yeah. Now, Granted, once you're in that 14 day quarantine, you should not be going anywhere. Um, and I, at least I don't know what it's like where you are, but I do know. And guys, Beijing was hit hard also. And Beijing, being a capital city, they had some really strict measures, which, which is one of the reasons why at least didn't come back sooner. But I'm quite sure that if she tries to leave, they will know instantly. Right? Have you, have you had any experience where you felt like you wanted to leave or, or did they warn you about any consequences if, if you leave? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I tried to check with them if I can just go downstairs to have a walk. They said no, because if you just come down and we see you and you will start from the day one <laughs> for wow. the self-quarantine again. Yeah. Wow. And you can just you know, go out of the door. So, and they told me every Tuesday, uh, Thursday and Saturday, there there will be some staff come to pick up the trash. So I, I will have some, you know, daily life, have some garbage, some right. trash. So people will just serve you, you know, by the way they are. And I have to follow all the rules. Just you know, be really good girl during the 14 days. You know? <laughs> well, that, that's the, yeah, I, I agree. I think, um, as you said, a lot of people who have felt a certain way, uh, they follow the rules. Uh, if you follow the rules yeah. in 14 days, they will set you free, so to speak. Um, but if you do mm-hmm. violate, you will have to start over again. And in this situation, everybody is a security guard. Your next door neighbors, uh, the old, the old right. down the hall. You're everybody right. Yeah. Because everybody wants to make sure that there is no chance of they and their family being, being infected. So I think it's okay. Um, 14 days inside, uh, I think, you know, you're going to learn a lot, a lot more about yourself. Um, you mentioned, though, that food delivery. So each day, do they take your order? Do you, do you put the order in the night before? How do they arrange the food delivery? Well, actually, I just order online, and they will just deliver uh, the delivery after 3 p.m. every day. I cannot, I cannot get the food uh, before 3 p.m., <laughs> so I have to you know, kind of save the food every day. Yeah. Wow. Okay, yeah. so it's not I can not in the morning, but I can get it in the afternoon. So, yeah. Okay, so you get you get it the same day, but it's not ordering from from restaurant. These are groceries that, that you're cooking. No, uh, I I can order from the restaurant, but I prefer don't. Yeah, I just order some groceries from uh, like vegetables or fruit or staple food. Yeah, just I cook myself okay. and trying to be healthy. <laughs> yeah, and no matter whether it's a restaurant or a, a grocery, only one per day maximum. Yes, you have to plan what you want today. <laughs> and personally, I'm a very, um, I'm, I rejected for the delivery because it's not uh, environmental friend- friendly. I hate delivery. So I just trying to order like once a week for what I want. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's very interesting. Just, just twice, have, yeah. Yeah, you have, to, you have to plan ahead. You have to order your breakfast, your lunch, um, the yep. night before, or order enough groceries so that you can have yeah. enough food, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Whatever it takes, you're not you're not going outside. You also mentioned that you must self-report. So, what information are you, are you reporting on a daily basis, and who are you reporting this information to? It's all the community, like you said, a security <laughs> team. They got a like a bunch of people, a volunteer, and the the staff who work for the community. So just get together to build up a team, call them like security team. So you, you just share uh, your temperature every day in the group. So mm-hmm. they will see, oh, yeah, she's still so alive and healthy, normal. Yes, online. It's an online yeah. app. And you made a very good point yeah. there. 
and I'm, I'm stressing this, um, I'm stressing this, excuse me, prior to the COVID outbreak, we have mm-hmm. security guards who, you know, check people who are coming into a building. When this yeah. took place, they ask for volunteers. And these volunteers are typically more senior residents um, who are stepping yeah. up. And I, I got to tell you, these people became super, super security guards. I mean, they would not let anybody in without proper documentation. Um, they yeah. No excuses, you're not getting in. Or <laughs> no excuses, you're not getting out. Right, so I want to say that they did a great job, um, mm-hmm. and, and you know, they, and again, they're the ones who are who are coming in contact with a lot of people on a daily basis. But those same security guards who were, who were, I guess you say, had a very easy job. They had a lot of stress coming overnight because now they had to maintain uh, what, what we call not just structure, but maintain policies. And as you know, mm-hmm. a lot of residents want to go around policies and. These guys, man, they really did a great job. Um, initially, yeah. the first two weeks, they had a lot of complaints because people want to live their life. But ultimately, and at least you, you can talk to this, ultimately, they did a great job um, imposing their will on people and making sure that everybody followed the regulations exactly as they were put out. Yes, uh, just as you just shared, they are so responsible. Like sometimes, uh, well, I, I don't want to judge but like the experience i had for the last week we have been um communicate for the trash uh, how to pick up the trash what time how to do that they have a really strict like procedure right and if i don't follow the procedure they will call me and they will just knock the door and they phone me <laughs> and try to make sure that i follow the procedure so they told us like uh you have to inform the community staff before you just put out, put the trash outside the room and you inform the staff first and then you, uh, you wait for them to call you uh, with them to knock your door and then you pick up the trash. And yeah. you cannot just uh, put out the trash outside your house. And uh, yeah, and every, every morning it's 9 a.m. You cannot be early or be later. <laughs> so right just right. A, and a lot of time to communicate on this trash pickup yeah yeah i, I know in some places it's very very strict on how they do it they, they take oh. the trash away and it's incinerated right away it doesn't, go, yeah. it doesn't go to the same place where where regular trash goes and again i mean they had that strict schedule and i think i think it, it, it makes sense so um i hope you're doing i hope you're doing fine there you know um i know some yeah. foreigners I, I think chinese nationals and foreigners have different experiences because if you get uh, in trouble for violating, you know, you start over again. Maybe get a, pay a fine or something, but you're not going to yeah. get get kicked out of the country. Some foreigners have been literally kicked out of the country for violating. Now, what will happen is they will continue. They'll start over the 14 day. Once mm-hmm. the 14 days finished, they are they are removed from the country, uh, and you can't come back for five years. So I, I know um, a lot of foreigners now don't violate. Also, right because mm-hmm. it's just not yeah. worth. And they really celebrate yeah. once they're free. <laughs> once they're free. <laughs> but, yeah, well, I, I tell you, this this is really similar like a prison life. I, I tell you. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah well, hopefully you, you don't know real prison life, but um, and maybe it's not that bad, quite, quite frankly, because you still you still have all access to your to your TVs, to your yeah. Wi-Fi, to this and that. Yeah, but yeah. In prison, you typically don't have access to your friends and family, so um, you are you're alone there. You live by yourself. How is how are you keeping in contact with your loved ones, with your friends, and you have a boyfriend in the same city? How are you guys keeping in contact? Does he go downstairs and you just look, look at him out the window and wave? <laughs> no, because he cannot come into my community. I mean, the gate. He oh, cannot okay. come in. No, he can't because uh, after I'm released, <laughs> I'm saying, after I got free, after I finished this self quarantine, I got a card. Uh, right. healthy car I got the car and I can just afraid to go out and go come in so he didn't live in my community so he cannot go in to see me anyway so we still communicate in the WeChat and online yeah just like well, that still. way what? yeah still because here in Shanghai again same thing visitors, visitors were not allowed in but now visitors can come back in so in Beijing Ooh. still still no in Beijing no. Wow. No. wow wow no. 
Okay, so yeah. I guess we got you got to talk a lot there and do you and online reach at and the phone and whatnot. So so continue to do, do that. As you know, it's very important to continue the communication. Um, I'm going to yeah. ask you to summarize. So can you just summarize what's been your experience? I um, mean, you're at you are not you are at day eight now. You have about five more days, five or six mm-hmm. more days in your quarantine. Can you summarize mm-hmm. your experience thus far? Yeah. Well. Um... It's more like the first thing you have to prepare as your, you know, your mindset because this is gonna be a fourteen days self quarantine, and you have to keep a very stable mood. Like, although I'm in self quarantine, it means I'm isolated to outside, but I still got a lot of support from the outside as well because mm. so many people out there are serving you, they support you for the trash picking up, for delivery food, or um, just for you know, spirit support, your family or friends. So just just adjust your mood to be really stable, as recognize. Okay, I will be here for myself for the next fourteen days, but I still got you know, a lot of support outside. Grateful, um, grateful, and gratitude. Yeah, grateful. Yes, yes. Just feel that way and uh, plan. Just make a plan to your daily work, yeah, you know, daily life, and prepare to make a plan for your food. <laughs> yeah, it's very important at this moment. It's very important because if you are just making one mistake, you don't get enough food. You may feel very angry and hungry first, and I'm then angry. angry. <laughs> yeah, a lot of emotions just rising up. So just take care of your physical body. It's really important at this moment. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, and uh, I just open my window uh, window from time to time to take some deep breaths of the you know. The fresh air to look outside to still be connected with the nature because there are trees, there are birds outside, right? right? So, this is also very important. And I do some exercise as well, try to keep the energy up, 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 holding that, yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, be nice to the people who are, you know, trying to support you in the community. And they have been um, doing this for quite a long time. And uh, sometimes it's become a routine. And you show some respect and try to be nice to communicate with them. I mean, they are not bad people. They're trying to support yeah, and you. are dealing with so <laughs> many people, so many people who are yeah. you know, one person. Yeah. You know, on, on yeah. They're dealing with so many people who have returned. So I, I agree with yeah. much everybody who's still working outside. It's a tremendous amount of gratitude. So Elise Lee, yeah. thanks for coming back. And yeah. the next time I talk to you, you are going to be, you have your prison strikes on, right? Your prison strikes on. Next time we talk to you, you're going to be free. And we look forward to <laughs> learning more about the first things you're doing now that you have your, your freedom. So thanks for joining. I will catch you again. Yeah. Thank you, Colin. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.